Hello friends, welcome to the tutorial learning fast API. This is the 13th video of the series and in this video I am going to cover header parameters. If you have not already subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below and also don't forget to click on the bell icon next to it. Like the query path or other parameters that you have seen till now, header parameters is another way of passing the data. So you can pass information through the header. The way we started with query parameter, it again the header parameter, we can start by putting the module header which comes with the fast API. So we can go ahead and say header over here and uh, that's it. The next thing we as you see we always start with the skeleton code over here. So now let me start by creating a small REST API function. So notice this code over here. It's a simple REST API function without any parameters. So now let me go ahead and add a header parameter for this. So the way to declare a header parameter is the same way as we did with path or query parameters. The first value is the default value. You can pass all the extra validations and annotations to this parameter as we did with path or query. So I'm not going to cover that. I'm going to just show you how to use a, or how to pass the header parameters. So in this case, I'm going to create a parameter that's called as adds ID over here. And then here I'm defining the type and I'm saying header. So this is very important over here. This keyword header is what going to make this as a header parameter. Otherwise it will become a response body request body. So I, now this particular keyword is going to make this as a header parameter. This ABC what you are looking at here is the default value that I am passing to the ads ID and then I'm going to return the same thing over here. So now I'll accept this ads ID as the header parameter and then I'm going to return the same back. Now if I go ahead and run this code, let me refresh this page, you can see we have one get method called items and here notice that that parameter name is adds id but it's of type header so i can pass any value so let me go ahead and try this so now i'm going to say one two three and i'm going to execute this when i execute this notice over here the value is passed has a header parameter over here adds id and then one two three and then i got it i got back the same successfully this is as simple as it gets for creating or uh, for creating header parameters the only thing that you need to notice in the code is that earlier for query or path parameters i used to add here as path or query the same thing i'm just modifying it now instead of path i'm going to make it as header and that becomes a header parameter you should remember that header is a sister class of path or query objects it also inherits from the same common param class but remember that when you import query path or header and others from the fast api these are actually functions that return special classes and nothing more to declare headers you need this header class because otherwise this parameter if you don't specify this header over here this parameter would be interpreted as a query parameter now let me show you another important feature in this header parameter so i'm going to create another function over here let me copy this code over here. So you can see this, there's another function which I've created. I've named it as items one. This is the path for that function. And here notice that the header parameter is user agent. User agent is one of the default parameters that is available. It gives us the user agent which we are using to pass the request. And then the only thing that you need to notice here is that instead of passing user hyphen agent which is the actual way of passing this variable i'm passing it as user underscore agent and then i'm not passing any default value to this 
I've just set it as user agent. Now, let me go ahead and try this before explaining. Now, if I refresh this page, you see we, I have two functions. This is our new one which I created. I'm not going to pass any value to this. I'm going to just execute this. So when I try this, you can see I didn't pass anything, but I got back the value. So the user agent has returned the agent details which has been picked up from this browser information. So one thing that you need to notice here is that in the code, I've passed it as user underscore agent, but still I got back the proper header information. That is because the header usually has a little extra functionality on top of what path or query provides. Most of the standard header parameters are separated by hyphen character, which is nothing but the minus symbol that you use. Okay, so usually for this user agent, it is not user underscore agent, it will always be like user hyphen agent. But the problem here is that in Python, user underscore agent is invalid. So this underscore, we can't pass it for a parameter. So what FastAPI does is by default, the header function which we are using over here, it will convert the parameter names character from the underscore to hyphen to extract and document the headers. So in this case, when I pass this user underscore agent, it actually went ahead and made it as user hyphen agent. And that is why I got back the proper response when I returned in this line. Also, you need to see, notice that HTTP headers are case insensitive. They are not case sensitive. Unlike Python, which is case sensitive, HTTP headers are case insensitive. So you can declare them with standard Python style, also known as snake style or anything else. So in this case, here I have passed it as user underscore agent in snake style, but it still went ahead and returned proper user agent value. The actual header is like this. It is user hyphen agent. This is what is a proper variable name. But the header function does all the work that is required in the background and then will return, will know by default like what we are trying to do and then it will return an appropriate header value back to us. So this is how we pass header parameters. Before uh, closing this uh, tutorial, I'm going to cover one more sample over here. I'm going to show you another sample. Notice a parameter name over here. It is called as strange underscore header. Suppose you get into a situation where you have to pass the parameter name with the underscore value. And uh, by default, as you know, header is going to convert the underscore into a hyphen which you don't require. In such a scenario, you can go ahead and use this attribute called convert underscore and you can set it to false. That means when I pass this, I get it back as strange underscore header only and it will not change it to strange hyphen header. So whenever there is a necessary a necessity for you to pass a header parameter, with an underscore and you don't want fast API or the header function to automatically convert in such a scenario, you can go ahead and use this attribute. When you set it to false, it will not convert the underscore to an iPhone. The default value for this is true. Hence, every time if you don't set this, it will go ahead and convert the underscore to an iPhone. So in this case, it won't happen. So that's about passing the header parameters. With this, you have all the other benefits. You can do all those different types of validations here too and it works, okay? So that's it about header parameters. In the next video, I'm going to cover response model. If you have not already subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button below. And also don't forget to click on the bell icon next to it. Thank you.